connection of muscles and stilettos. It is a show dedicated to connecting you to services, products, and information, all here to help you live your fittest, healthiest, and happiest self. Today, I designated today as a Total Fitter Woman Monday. Why? Because we as individuals are not just a body. We are not just a physique. Our health involves more than just the body. It is the mind, the body, and spirit connection. Without those three components, it's like as if you've been hobbled. A lot of times we focus on the six pack and the muscles, and which are beautiful because everybody wants to feel and look strong, but strength truly begins in the mind. It's not the body. It is the mind and your spirit. Your spirit is the root of all things because your body can weaken, your mind can wander, but the spirit, that is where your true strength lies. So today we started by, I, I read a book called Solomon's, Solomon's Southern Fist, and it's written by Nardu Debra. And it talks of, it speaks on a little boy named Solomon who loves martial arts and has been selected to compete. And Solomon, you know, he's excited. He Well, he was excited. He wasn't excited. He was so scared. Meanwhile, he had the skills to be able to compete or else his sensei wouldn't have asked him to. Would have, he wouldn't have been selected. But his fears began to overwhelm him. And this story goes on to talk about how Solomon began, begins to overcome his fear. Now, in this book, the character is a little boy, but we all know that that has been us at some point or time. It's not Fear is not something that is only for children. It is something that is in all of us. I want to show you the book cover, but if you didn't, you can find it on my page, um, The Fitter Woman on Facebook. The author is Nardu Debra. Illustration is done by Chi Debra. And you can find the book on Amazon. It is beautifully illustrated. This young little man. But I was going to talk about something today. And I said, you know what? Why not continue with that? Why not continue with this concept of fear? Hey, fitness freak. What is fear? What exactly is fear? And, and fam, you can um, come in and you can chat. You can come in online and chat with me and ask me questions or make your statement. But let's begin with fear. What is it? What is the science of it? So the science behind fear. Fear, according to, uh, I was doing research today, but fear is an adaptive behavior. It is something that we have had, we need to help us identify threat. It uses the amygdala, right? The amygdala is our sensory. And we're actually only born with two innate sense of fear. And I didn't realize this, but we're only born with two innate sense of fear, fear of falling and the fear of loud sounds, which in nature is very important because if you hear a loud sound, you know you need to move, right? Falling, you don't want to fall because that <laughs> more than probably would lead to death, right? So as human beings, that is our innate fear. All other fears are learned it, through our environment, through our cultures, whatever it is, through our the people that we send, that's our environment. Those are learned. So a lot of times parents unwilling, unwittingly teach their children fear. I'm a math teacher. I've said this many times and I've had parents tell me, uh, I understand why my son or daughter is not doing well in math because I was never good at math. And I'm like, mm, don't say that because what happens is now the child hears it. I know I'm, if they're saying it in front of me, they're saying it at home because their own experience has taught them, I'm afraid of numbers, I'm afraid of math. And so they innately teach their children that. We teach our children fear. We teach our children to, to kind of be like, oh, you know, mom and dad, and they may not even realize it, but they've picked up that fear. So we have to be mindful of our words because not only do they manifest things in our own existence, but they manifest things in the existence of the people around us because they're hearing it. Now, I know you see me with this. You're like, why in the month of April, almost May, does this woman have on her Happy New Year crown? In the beginning of the year, I spoke about being an anti 
New Year's resolution is. And I'm going to be talking about this for the rest of the year. And I said that I don't like New Year's resolutions because they end up being this, like, this long list of things that you're going to do. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to leave him. I'm going to leave her. I'm going to go to Cabo. I'm going to go to Spain. And I'm going to buy a house. And I'm going to buy a car. And I'm going to get a new job. You have all this list, all these things on your list, but not one thing has a plan. Okay, I'm going to go to Cabo. So my plan is I'm going to save X amount of dollars every month and I'm going to uh, put aside this and I'm going to do this. You have a plan. I plan on losing 10 pounds. Okay, how are you going to lose those 10 pounds? I'm going to drink more water. I'm going to start eating whole foods. You're making a plan. I'm going to get this job. Well, what's your plan? I'm going to write a resume. I'm going to look over my resume. I'm going to um, go over my interviewing skills. I'm going to see, I'm going to do research in the company. You have a plan. So that's why I said I am not a fan of New Year's resolution because then what happens by around this time, <laughs> February, March, people have given up. All, but the thing was, you weren't going to succeed because you never had a plan. So Instead of having these lists, make a plan. So this year, I said one of the things that I was going to do is I wrote myself an anchoring statement. I encouraged everyone and still encourage you if you haven't done so, write an anchoring statement. And this crown reminds me of my anchoring statement. And I'll put it on when I'm in my office and I'm about to do something, about to make a decision. I put on my crown and I said, what's your anchoring statement? My anchoring statement for this year is to be bold and to be courageous. And I wanted to share that with you because we're talking about fear today. Because I'm deciding to be bold and to be courageous, that means I'm deciding to face my fears. And that is not a comfortable thing. It is not comfortable. Fear is not comfortable. Fear is scary. And making certain decisions is really, really scary. I remember listening to a speaker and he said, the very door that you're afraid to go through is the door that you need to go through. That door, the scary door, unless there's like a little killer behind it, then you don't go behind that door. Especially if you, you definitely don't want to go behind that door. But the very door that you're most afraid of is the door that you need to go through. And that's the door that you're going to grow through. So fear. Fear is false evidence appearing real. More about the science. So like I said, it is an adaptive behavior that we were born with as humans to protect us from predators, right? You've all heard of fight or flight, correct? So fight or flight is something that we're presented with when something scares us, right? Your brain reacts with fight or flight. So you're either going to fight the situation or you're going to move from it, right? So now what does that happen? What happens? Sometimes when we're presented with a situation, we actually freeze, right? You're like, ah! I don't know what to do. And you freeze. You're so afraid to move forward that you just don't move at all. Are you going to fight your way through it? Or are you going to run from it? Now, you can physically run from something that is physically harming you. But some situations, it's not anything physical. It's emotional. It's mental. So how are you going to fight through that particular situation? Right? So if if fear is something that we can fight through, what are we going to, how, how do we do that? If you remember from the story, um, again, I'm, I'm going to be referring to this story. You guys got to get this book, Solomon Southern's Fist. You can find it on Amazon. Beautifully illustrated. But Solomon begins to, he hears his teacher. He listens to his teacher. We can look at that as our inner voice. Because the reality is fear as I said before, fear is false evidence appearing real. The reality is, the truth is, fear is worse than reality. What you're afraid of is actually worse. What you're afraid of, you're making it worse than what the reality is. Example, went to the dentist, had to get work done. And usually when I'm getting work done, they have, to, have them put me to sleep because I don't, I, my dentist is amazing. Very gentle, very sweet. But I don't like dental work. I just, I don't like being awake. I don't want to see the tools. And I was just so afraid. This time it was so minor. He's like, 
poor Lindy, I really don't need to put you under. You can do this. I'm like, oh, I don't want to. <laughs> He's like, I'm telling you, you can. Now, up until this point, I know you all know I'm an IFBB pro and I train with my coach. So my coach is um, Max Charles, IFBB pro, very excellent coach. But when we're training, he always talks about fear and he talks about how when you're afraid of something, it makes it harder. So whenever we're training and the weight gets hard and the training gets hard, he's like, he'll say, you got to breathe. So I have to breathe through it. He doesn't take it off. He doesn't take it away. He makes me breathe through it. Because what happens, you get so tense that whatever you're experiencing, you're making it 10 times worse. So what I did is I took that lesson and I sat in a sentence chair. I'm like, I could do this. Even though I was scared. I'm not going to lie to you. Be like, yeah, I was brave. No, I was scared. Even though I was scared, but I took that lesson of fear and I sat in the chair. And believe me, I was not that calm. And I sat in the chair and I did it. Now, after he's done, because I was just like this the entire time. And when he was done, he was like, was it bad? Was you, were you uncomfortable? I'm like, you know what? The reality is it wasn't. It didn't hurt. It was the anticipation. It was the anticipation of my fear, the anticipation of what was about to happen. That is what made me the most afraid. My hands were sweaty. And by the time everything was done, I was like, you know what? Fear is really false evidence appearing real. Our fears make things worse than what our reality is, right? And the thing is, here's the interesting part. You can actually manifest your fear. You can actually bring it into being because you put so much thought, so much energy into it, you actually manifest it. That's the law of manifestation. When they tell you, you what, whatever you speak is what will be, because our words our thoughts are like seeds in the universe. We speak it, we think it, and we put energy behind it. The universe doesn't say, you know what, that's some negative stuff coming out of their mouth. Let me not manifest that. The universe is really just going to manifest exactly what you're putting energy and thought through. So if you're putting your energy and thought through losing your house, guess what's going to happen? You're going to lose your house. And then you're going to turn around and you're going to say, see, I told you I was going to lose your house. Of course you're going to lose your house. You were so afraid of it and so fearful and you kept speaking it. You actually spoke it into reality. Now, I'm not telling you to sit around and go, oh, I'm not going to lose my house. You, I'm not going to lose my house. Here is my plan. Right. So if you're fearful of something and you keep speaking on that fear, my business is not going to work. I know it's not going to work. I don't have the intelligence. I don't have the money. I don't have the money. I don't have the money to invest in this. No. But then you won't have the money to invest in it. And yes, your business will not grow and nothing will come of it. You won't get into the college of your choice because you're saying that I can't get into the college of my choice. I'm, I'm not intelligent. So then your, your test scores come out low. This is one of the things I tell my students that tell me I'm not going to pass. I'm like, you're right. You're not going to pass. And they look at me like, miss, that's so mean. I'm like, no, I'm just repeating what you've said. I'm not going to pass. I said, once you've said it, You've taken it into your brain, and that's exactly what will manifest. And then when you don't pass, you'll say, see, I didn't pass. And I'll say exactly, because it's exactly what you wanted. But if you say instead, I'm not going to fail, and this is my plan. I'm going to study for 15 minutes every night for the week. I'm going to practice 15, every, every, uh, uh, 15 minutes every night before I take my test. You've made a plan. So with fear, it can manifest because if it's strong enough, it is what will be, right? That's why they say misery loves company. Your negative thoughts, your negative speech, you just track all these negative people. And then you wonder why you keep dating the same people. Why do I keep finding these bums? Why do I keep finding these, these women that are just crumb snatch? I had a friend of mine, his dad used to say, love snatching children, but love snatchers. But you're going to continue to attract exactly what your thoughts are, what your words are. So don't be surprised if you keep dating the same bum or the same gold digger or whatever it is that you attract. If you keep dating the same type of person and dating the same type of guy, that's you. <laughs> that's not them. That's you. You're attracting these things into your being. And that's what happens with fear. The last truth behind fear, and it is overwhelming. Fear can take you to a place where you feel as if you 
cannot breathe, you cannot move, and you're trying to figure out why. Fear stops you in your track. So that's why it's overwhelming. So how do we overcome this feeling? How do we come overcome this feeling of fear? So we're speaking about it. We know it's fight or flight. We know that it, it, it creates a sense of, um, I want to show you this text. I'm going to show this to you. So how do you do it? Number one, you got to find your inner voice. So in the book, Solomon Southern Fist, he has his Sifu, his teaching. It's a very calm voice. He's a very calm character. And he's like, hey, don't worry. You're going to do well at the national championship because we are going to fine tune your skills. It's a plan. This is a plan. This is our plan to overcome your fear. Yet still, because when Solomon comes in, he's like, I really don't think I can do this. Because in his dreams, he's this magnificent fighter. He's he can summon the, the the spirit of the crane, the tiger, the lion, the snake, the dragon, right? And then when he comes to this situation, he's like, okay, in my dreams I can do this. But in reality, I'm just a little boy. And we all feel like that. I'm just a I'm just a human being. I'm just a woman. I'm just a man. I'm just a teenager, right? I, I can't do this. I'm just no, you're just none of you, you are powerful beings, each of you. Each of you are powerful, unique beings. And so his teacher, his inner voice tells him, mm -mm. you have everything that you need in you to overcome your fear. All the information, everything that we need, all the skills that we need, we already have in order to overcome our fears. We have the skill set. We just have to be willing to apply them, right? So First thing you need to do is you need to find your inner voice. And this is what I spoke of earlier today when I said you need a regular spiritual practice. And what it looks like will be different for, for every single one of you. Hey, everybody that's joining in. Hello, hello. I'm waving. I'm waving at everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> so when you find that inner voice. How do you find an inner voice? Praying, meditation, time alone, solitude. Remember how Superman had his fortress of solitude? When things just got too much, too heavy, too, too, just too loud for him, he had to remove himself so he could reconnect and find out who he truly was. And if you notice, most superheroes have a, a place that they have to get away. So they can just kind of just reconnect and just find out exactly what, why they're doing what they're doing. So for me, that requires me to meditate. And my boyfriend will tell you, whenever I don't meditate, he's like, you look like a top. You just start spinning around in circles. I'm not focused. But when I'm regularly practicing, praying, meditating, focused, right? So you have to find out what that means to you, whether it means to go for a walk every morning, every evening, you need alone time. And I'm sorry, I know the coronavirus, it's making for everybody go indoors. And a lot of people are afraid, not afraid so much of being indoors, but being quiet, being still, because that brings up a lot of stuff that you have inside of you that you didn't realize you had. And it's very scary to look at but that's a very door we need to go through, that time of self-reflection, right? So you have to find your inner voice, and then you gotta make a decision, right? Am I gonna do this? Am I gonna not? Am I not going to do this? So there's a point in the story where they call Solomon's name, and they say, Solomon, he's gonna demonstrate the Southern Fist. There is a form that he's gonna demonstrate. And his face is just shocked, and he's like, oh, he freezes. And then he remembers his inner voice. He remembers his seafood, he said, who says to him, fear is nothing but false evidence appearing real. And then he makes a decision. He takes a breath and he's like, I'm going to do this, right? I'm going to overcome my fear. And that happens to us. We have to make a decision. And once we make that decision, take a breath and take a leap. That's the scary part, taking that step. 
And we have to take that leap in faith. That's where our faith comes in. I know not everybody believes in God. They may call him Allah. They may call him creator. Not everybody, I'm not even saying in a religious sense. And I'm not going to shy away from my belief in God. I do. I believe God. I believe in there's a great creator. I believe that there's a, an energy that connects each and every one of us that, that is within us, that once we're connecting to it, it amplifies us exponentially, math term, exponentially. It's very important. So once you're able to connect to that inner voice, that voice, once you hear it, it never gets quiet on you unless you get disconnected. That inner voice is what tells you, go left. And you're like, what? Go right. What? You want me to go right, but... There's like, you know, brush and all kinds of stuff I got to go through. And it's telling you, no, 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 I want you to go down that path. That is your faith guiding you. And there's many, 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 many times. I am a big, I, I can tell you how many times my instincts will say, nope, do this. Tonight's broadcast, I wasn't going to talk about this topic. This wasn't in, even in my mind. And then my spirit was like, fear. You're going to talk about fear. Because this is what is surrounding. This is what is globally affecting all of us. Fear. When are they going to open the world? When are they going to start the economy? What's going to happen with my job? What's going to happen with my house? What's going to happen with the kids' tuition? It's just fear bubbling up, bubbling up. And it's real. Like, I can't tell you, oh, don't be afraid. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to be afraid and it's okay to be afraid. What is not okay is to be so crippled that you can't take your next step. Okay, my mortgage is due and I don't have the money for it. What's my plan? The government said they're going to give me this. They're going to give me this. Okay, what's our plan? What can we do? What's in my wheelhouse? What else do I know how to do? What can I do that can help me online? What kind? Of, what is something I've been wanting to do for a long time? And now that my butt is home, I can now do it. Maybe there's a job, a dream, some kind of patent that you've been wanting to do, some kind of technology that you've been wanting to build. Take this time. Because that's in your wheelhouse, that's yours, that's your gift, to help you plan to come out of this fear. So like I said, find your inner voice, make a decision, take a breath and then take a leap. Find your inner power, find your faith and then take a leap. Listen, the reality is this, fear is false evidence appearing real. We know that our fear makes the reality worse and it actually distorts reality, right? So once you've decided that this is not real, I'm going to walk through that door, sweaty palms, sweaty, sweaty face, beating heart and all, <laughs> again, because I'm just no <laughs> behind the door, I'm going to walk through that door, guns blazing, bold and courageous, and I'm going to go for it. And guess what, guys? I have one guarantee, and I can guarantee you this, win or lose, you're gonna be better. Win or lose, you're going to be stronger. Win or lose, you're going to be ahead. I know you're gonna be like, how are you gonna be, how are you going to lose and be ahead? Win or lose, you're going to be ahead because you're gonna learn while, even if you lose, you're gonna learn while you're losing. I love when Will Smith says, whatever you do, fail forward. Whatever you do. So if you're running, you skin your knee, okay. <laughs> you get up, you have your little scab. That little scar is there to remind you that you got up. You have to get up. So that's what your fears, your fears will overwhelm you and they will take you down, it will break you. But your fear can be overcome if you're willing to just find your inner voice, make your decision, Take a breath, find your inner power, and take a leap. Fam, so tonight I wanted to talk about fear. If you have any statements you want to share, but that was pretty much what I wanted to talk and share with you. So leave your comments down below as to what you want to talk about next time, and I'm here for you. So fam, this Friday or Saturday, I have, um, remember last week we spoke on the black female athlete and I had my wonderful guest, Roxanne Edwards, IFBB Pro, and also Kat Vogel. She's also an NPC 
competitor and a massage therapist and you know just personal trainers amazing ladies and um so we spoke about the black athletes so very soon this week i'm not sure if it's friday or saturday i'm going to be welcoming a panel of beautiful women who are all physical therapists and they're going to speak on physical therapy from the perspective of an athlete physical therapy is not just for rehab physical therapy is there to help you move better so fam with that being said be bigger, be fitter, be stronger. Find your inner Solomon. Find that book on Amazon. Okay, it's by Nardu Debra. Find that book, find your inner Solomon. Read this book with your family. It'll be the best thing you've ever done, especially now. It's a beautiful story. And the truth is we can all connect with it. Family, bigger, be fitter, be stronger, be good to you. And I'll see you next time.